There was a study a while back, maybe you've heard of it, that became quite popular in the mainstream. It was a study about the smell of sweat. Specifically, male sweat that had soaked into a t-shirt. Women who participated in the study smelled the sweaty t-shirts, and by scent alone, they made judgments as to how attractive they thought the men were. The study found that women were most attracted to a man's sweat odor when they had different types of immune system. However, this non-random attraction only occurred in ovulating women. The chemical signals from each type of immune system were secreted into the man's sweat, and when ovulating women detected those chemical signals, they found that they were more attracted to men whose chemical signals were different than those in their own immune system. The mind-blowing conclusion of the study was that this was a subconscious, chemical-based, biological cue that encouraged ovulating women to be attracted to and reproduce with men who had significantly different alleles involved in their immune system. The result of this chemical-based attraction would be a newborn child with hybrid vigor with respect to their immune system. The child has a wide diversity of alleles for its immune system, which gives it a better capacity for reacting to and fighting off all kinds of pathogens. It was essentially a study that found a subtle evolutionary mechanism involved in human mating. And because of that, it generated enormous attention. It was super fascinating. Well, now I bring you another, much more recent, but very similar study with equally interesting results. This study, conducted by researchers at the University of Bern in Switzerland and published in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society B, works on basically the same principle as the earlier study, but they flipped the script. Instead of women smelling men's sweat, they had men smell women's body odor, and by that variable alone, they had the men rank the women by their perceived attractiveness. But instead of looking at the immune system of their subjects, the researchers analyzed hormone levels to see if that was having any effect on the women's body odor and on male interest. The researchers took samples of sweat and saliva from the women. From the saliva, they measured levels of progesterone, testosterone, oestradiol, and cortisol. The sweat was used as the odor compound that the men smelled. The results were pretty strong, and they fit nicely alongside other studies into a larger evolutionary context. They found that men did not show individual preferences in smell, but instead they were all strongly like-minded in the body odors that they found attractive and unattractive. It turns out that the body odors that men found most attractive had the highest levels of oestradiol and the lowest levels of progesterone. This is really interesting, because both oestradiol and progesterone are hormones that promote the development of larger breasts and curvier waists and more feminine facial features. Other studies have found strong links between higher levels of these hormones in women and their perceived physical attractiveness in the eyes of their male peers. So it's strange that high oestradiol contributes to attractive body odor, but not high progesterone. The critical detail here is that women experience large dips in their progesterone levels during peak fertility in their ovulation cycle. Essentially, the men found the body odors of the most fertile women to be the most attractive. This fits in with other studies, like the ones about physical attractiveness that I already mentioned, and others that have found that women with higher oestradiol are generally more fertile than those women with lower levels of the hormone. The takeaway here is that women smell more attractive to men when they're at their most fertile. This is yet another way in which a subtle evolutionary mechanism exists in the human mating dynamic. But it's not quite that simple. The immune system study implied that there was a genetic component to the sense of attraction. But this study controlled for a few particular genetic influences and found that they weren't really that involved in this particular hormone-smelling phenomenon. It wasn't a case of individuals finding optimal partners. It was a case of women sending out a stronger signal at peak fertility and men detecting that signal and responding with greater arousal and sexual interest. One of the researchers and authors of the study, Janik Loebmeyer, was quoted as saying, The most surprising result was the degree to which men agreed on which body odors they found attractive. This suggests that body odor attractiveness does not lie in the nose of the smeller. 
the fact that levels of reproductive hormones explained body odor attractiveness of women is interesting and fits very well with evolutionary explanations, since women with high oestradiol levels are, potentially, more fertile than women with less oestradiol, and hence, following an evolutionary approach to attractiveness, should be more attractive. Within an evolutionary framework, these findings are meaningful and interesting. An evolutionary approach to female attractiveness proposes that men should generally prefer women who signal high reproductive health and fertility." Unquote. 